Hey, this is Damien Blinkensop, Quantified Body. I'm gonna show you what I'm up to right now. I'm doing an experiment to optimize my ketogenic diet. Now, one of the things I've been doing daily is I have a green smoothie. So I'm putting a whole bunch of items into this. It includes all of these kind of vegetables, a broad spectrum of vegetables to get a broad spectrum of micronutrients is what I'm trying to do there. And also some fats and some other items. And I have that typically for my lunch. Now what I'm interested in, because I'm optimizing for ketosis right now, is if this has any impact. Because when you're juicing things, turning them into smoothie, it's gonna hit your bloodstream quicker. And I wanna make sure that it's not knocking me out of ketosis or it's not, not knocking my ketosis ketones downwards a bit. Now let me tell you what I put into my smoothie at the moment in case you're interested you want to know what I'm actually eating here. So I have Brain Octane, that is caprylic acid C8. There are other brands I use sometimes also. This is the one I'm currently using to help bump my ketones a little bit. And a little bit of stevia, um, just a couple of drops really, just because some of the stuff I'm putting in here I don't really like, like kale and stuff like that. It's really not my thing. This takes the bite off it and makes it all good. A little bit of collagen protein. CalMag, calcium magnesium. For one reason, it's a trick that I got from Dave Asprey, the Bulletproof Executive. This is to reduce the potential or risk of having issues with oxalates because it neutralizes some of those. So just as a precaution, I put a bit of this in each time that I'm making this. The other reason is that I'm following the Walsh protocol still from William Walsh, if you saw it in the episode two of the Quantified Body Podcast. I'm still optimizing for that and I have to take CalMag every day to adjust some of my blood markers that weren't optimized and I'm optimizing my brain chemistry this is gonna help also I have to take it every day anyway so it's kind of synergistic and I like efficient things like that okay this stuff this is just for taste uh, this is awesome macadamia oil I've fallen in love with this for the past uh, past month I take it in my coffee I take it I take it with with uh, eggs I take it with everything I mean I love this stuff maybe I'm taking too much of it but I'm putting this stuff in a lot of things avocado oil not so keen on it but you know I throw it in to mix up the variety there and I got some butter, gonna put some butter in. Why put some fats in a smoothie? Because some, some of the vitamins and micronutrients you want in it, they're fat soluble. So you're gonna get more of them if you have fat. And I'm on a ketogenic diet right now, so I'm putting fat in everything anyway to make sure I'm hitting my markers for the day. And then I simply have a different variety of vegetables every day. So I have some celery here, I got, I got some lettuce, I got some kale, I got some peppers. Um, sweet peppers and I got some broccoli and I got some parsley and I got some mint. I really like mint. I think this is a really good thing to put into smoothies if you're not doing that already. So that's what I'm going to put into my smoothie today. But what I want to tell you, or what I want to show you rather, is what it's actually going to do to my blood glucose and my blood ketones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a baseline reading right now and show you what it is in my current state. And uh, just so you know, this is around midday, it's 2 p.m. where I am right now. And the other thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking, at every 15 minute interval after I've had my smoothie, I'm gonna be taking those readings again to see what the curve is, what's gonna happen with my glucose, and what's gonna happen with my ketones. So because I'm in England right now, I'm using a Freestyle Optium Neo. Okay, in the US you can use a Precision Extra. Exactly the same device, actually, by the same company, Abbott. So, just setting this up here. I'm gonna take my blood glucose first. So that is 4.6 millimolar English units there. Here we have 1.5 millimolar. So that's blood ketones are 1.5 millimolar at my baseline. So that's well into ketosis. That's actually pretty, pretty nice. So now for the experiment, let's make this smoothie and see what happens to my glucose and ketones. They have a nice big mess of fat and vegetables in there. What I love about this is it's also pretty efficient. So 
So there you have it. It's actually over a pint of this stuff, so it's, it's a fair amount. So I'm going to drink this now, and then I'm going to be back in 15 minutes, and I'm going to take my blood reading again and see what's happened. And then we're going to follow the curve. See you soon. Okay, so we just hit 15 minutes after taking my smoothie. So I'm going to check my, my blood readings again. Oh, so my blood glucose just went to 6.2 millimolar. Right, obviously I'm going to be doing some optimizing and some changes here. But we're going to go through and we're going to show the whole thing anyway. So that's my blood glucose. Now let's look at my blood ketones. Boom! Ketones. Not really changed much at all, 1.7. Now maybe that's some of the caprylic acid working for me there. I can see it's like bumped up slightly. So I'll see you back in 15 minutes. Okay, we're now at 30 minutes. This is a lot of finger pricking. So I'm taking my next reading. My hands are gonna be a mess after this. Okay, it's 5.9. So you see, it already seems to be declining for the glucose. That's the glucose. And the ketones just slightly bumped higher at 1.8. That's at the 30 minute mark. Okay, we're now 45 minutes into this. Gonna check again. Blood glucose first. Interesting. 5.9. That's the blood glucose, 5.9. Now the ketones at 45 minutes, they're 1.5 millimolar. Hey, back and it's 60 minutes since the smoothie. And check the blood glucose here. They were going in at 5.7 millimolar. That's the glucose. Ketones are slightly down. We're down to 1.3 millimolar. See you in 15. Okay, we're at the 75 minute mark. My fingers are seriously in a mess. What do I do for citizen science, huh? Okay, so glucose, 5.7 millimolar. Ketones, 1.4 millimolar. Okay, here we are at 90 minutes. So you think between 90 minutes and two hours, it should start settling down. 5.2 millimolar, that's for the glucose. And for the ketones, 1.3 millimolar at 90 minutes. Okay, so here we are at 105 minutes, 105 minutes. Here we have a response of 7.3 millimolar for glucose. I'm gonna double check that because I'm not sure how that is. So that just proves you gotta be careful with this data. So that's 5.4 millimolar for blood glucose. And we have 1.6 for the blood ketones. Okay, let's quickly sum up what happened here. My ketones throughout the whole of the experiment stayed over one millimolar. So that's what I consider optimal, to stay over one millimolar. And they also were far you know, above 0.5 millimolar, which is where I really don't wanna go below that. That's the level of nutritional ketosis. And that's the hard blue line here, and you can see I'm all about that. And for the glucose, I was a little worried at the start because it shot up really within the first 15 minutes, but then it stopped and it plateaued and it went down straight away. Now, if you think about it, that's what it should do, especially with liquid calories because they're entering your bloodstream more quickly. They're going straight into your, your gut and they're getting digested much more quickly. So with a smoothie, that was actually my concern that it would spike it um, too quickly. But it went up to around 110. You can see it stayed below the 120 line, which is really like where I don't want to go over too much. And it was over 100. I could think like 
to be really optimum, I'd like to stay under 100 most of the time. So this isn't the ideal thing to stay uh, ketogenic, to stay in ketosis all the time and to optimize your ketones. I also would have liked my blood glucose to dip further back down to normal before the end, around the 120 minute mark. So here we have glucose and ketones on the same chart, just easy to see in one go. This was a really useful experiment for me to do because I've been wondering about this and now I don't have to wonder about it, I know kind of what exactly is going on. If you have some kind of smoothie or juicing and you're trying to stay in ketosis, then this is something you could think about. And remember I added fat and C8 caprylic acid to this, so that should have had a combined good effect in terms of raising my ketones a little bit and also keeping the glucose uh, from spiking too much. If you like this sort of thing, if you like N equals one experiments or data numbers to back up the decisions you're making about health, fitness, performance, and longevity, join me. Do that by searching for Quantified Body on Google or on iTunes and you'll find us pretty quickly.